Good morning, HFC. Let's all stand and worship the Lord. Good morning. Oh, my life. Now, the party starts at 9, 
1045 and then at 3 p.m. we also have our bilingual service. So make sure you put that date on your calendar. That is the celebration for those of us who call ourselves Christ followers. We're so excited to be worshiping with you this morning. Um, we're so grateful that you're here. Let's continue to worship together. Well, good morning, everybody. Hey, you're awake. Has it been a great spring break? Have you had a good one? Some of you were saying, spring break, I worked all week. Uh, some of you got to sleep in. Some of you got engaged. Uh, some of you went to Six Flags. Yeah, some of you got to celebrate different things. I hope it's been a great week. I hope that some of you are online listening. Maybe you've got your AirPods in and you are traveling from back home from Disney World and you are just trying to make it back. Uh, we can't wait till you get here. Uh, I love this time of year. Uh, it's great to get to do things like this last week and have adventures, but it's, it's also shorts and hoodie weather, which is my favorite Ooh. time of year. It's awesome. Next week, uh, you heard in the video, we're doing this new thing. It's called Palm, the Palm Sunday Picnic. One of the things that we love around here is community and connecting and to being together and just having a good time as a community of believers. And so that's what we want to do. It feels like it's been a long time since we've been able to do something like that. And so after service next week, we'll head out to the parking lot. There will be games for kids. There will be activities for kids. It will feel like a kickoff to Easter. And we'll have food and we'll have games like cornhole and other stuff to hang out and just connect with people. It will be a great chance for you to invite someone to come to church next week. Because we're all about inviting people into a transforming life with Christ. So next week, Palm Sunday Picnic, you'll have ways to sign up. You heard about them in the, uh, the video there, through emails, through online, that you can help bring things and, and participate in that. That'll kick off the Holy Week, the, this week that we all just work toward, toward Easter, the greatest party Easter celebration day of the entire year. And uh, so mark your calendars. You should know Easter is April the... Fourth, I was actually asking you because I'd forgotten. Uh, April the 4th, and we'll have three services that day, and it's a great chance to celebrate God's grace. And that's what we want to do that day. So right now, uh, you're here, I'm here, and uh, we know God's here. There is something, there's something about when we stop everything. We bring the noise down of our life and our world, and we hone in. On Jesus. I uh, came to Houston a few years ago for an event called NYC, and there are thousands of teenagers at this place called NRG Stadium Reliant then, and I was in a hall full of people. There are thousands of people that are rushing back and forth, and I ran into an old friend. And as I'm looking at my old friend, we're catching it. We haven't talked in a long time. And my head is on a swivel. I'm looking for that person or this person, and I'm, you know, doing this. And I noticed something about my friend James. He was just like this. I mean, he was eyeball to eyeball. I mean, he just looked at me. He heard me. He listened not to the words I was saying, but he was, he was listening to my heart too. There's so many voices out there this week. They're all around us. God wants you to do this today. He wants you to do this today. He's here. Will you meet him? Father, we pray that in the next few minutes, God, that you would speak to us. God, we need to hear from you. Lord, so I pray that you would help us to praise you, to seek you. We know that you're going to meet us there. And Lord, God, we're going to give you praise for all these things in your name. Amen. Would you stand with us and let's sing together.
God's picture. Thank you today for your presence with us here in this place, but also always with us outside of this place. God, I thank you that you constantly and daily and hourly and every moment are inviting us deeper into a relationship with you. And God, I pray for all of us here today. God, I pray that we would continue to see you more clearly. God, I, I pray that we would continue to grow deeper and closer to you. God, I pray that we would be more transformed. God, that our words would begin to sound more like yours, that our, our actions would begin to look more like yours. God, that our priorities would be completely reorganized in whatever way they most fit to be like yours. God, I pray that you would help us and transform us. God, we want to be your hands and feet. God, I pray that as we prepare to hear your words that you have given Pastor Matt this week, God, that our hearts would be softened, that our ears would be opened to the message that you have for us today, to the challenge, to the encouragement, so that when we leave this place, we are not the same people as when we walked in. God, I pray that today that would be the cry and the only desire of our hearts in this room today. It's in your holy and precious name we pray. This time we want to continue to worship through giving. Uh, you, we are a part of a generous uh, community here, and we just want to thank you for your faithfulness uh, in honoring God in this area of your life. And so we worship through giving online. Uh, we've learned that practice in this last year. You can go to our, our website and look for the Give tab there. You can give in the worship box out in the foyer there. Um, that's that white box to my left, and you can drop your tithes and offerings in there. So uh, I don't, uh, it's been a long time since I've had uh, cable TV, but uh, so I don't get the privilege of watching a lot of commercials uh, like some do, but uh, there is a group of commercials that I find and have found quite entertaining. It's uh, the life coach, Dr. Rick, uh, as he teaches us how not to become like our parents. Uh, here's a few reminders of those commercials. We're at the movies and we need to silence our phone. Who knows where that button is? I don't have silent. Everyone does, right up here. It happens to all of us. We buy a new home and we turn into our parents. What I do is help new homeowners overcome this. Was that an adjustable spanner? Good choice, Steve. Okay, don't forget, you're not assisting him. You hired him. If you have nowhere to sit, you have too many. Who else reads books about submarines? My dad. Yeah. Oh, those are... Progressive can't protect you from becoming your parents, but we can protect your home and auto when you bundle with us. Look at that. Do we really need a sign to live, laugh, and love? Yes. The answer is no. I can help new homeowners not become their parents. Kiana. Nope. Koei no. No. Joaquin. No. It just takes practice. Give it a shot. Do you hear that? Yeah. It's a constant battle. We're going to open a PDF. Who's next? Progressive can't save you from becoming your parents, but we can save you money when you bundle home and auto with us. No fussing, no cussing, and no cussing. Everyone, we made it. My job is to help new homeowners who have turned into their parents. I'm having a big lunch and then just a snack for so dinner. we're just... using a speakerphone in this store. Is that a good idea? One of the ways I do that is to get them out of the home. You're looking for a grout brush. This Garth, is did he ask for your help? No. 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 We all see it. We all see it. He has blue hair. Okay. Blue. Progressive can't protect you from becoming your parents, but we can protect your home and auto when you bundle with us. You don't know. Mm, we all see it. Uh, we all see it. Have you found a, a moment where you uh, suddenly realized that you were sounding a little bit like your parents? Where you needed some help with a PDF or 
uh, you have a, maybe a pillow obsession. Uh, I, I discovered one of those for me when I was about 40, it turned 40. Uh, my love for puns suddenly grew, uh, better known as, as dad jokes. Uh, and so one night I found this place in Colorado that they post these hilarious signs every week. And for the next 30 minutes, I was checking out signs like this. Break in at the Apple store. Police looking for eyewitnesses. Or this one, life is short. If you can't laugh at yourself, call me. I will. Or how about this one? If a cow doesn't produce milk, is it a milk dud or an utter failure? That's right. That's funny, folks. Funny. Now my, my kids roll my eyes and they go, oh, Dad, that's just, uh, I'm becoming one of those people. I'm becoming my parents. Uh, have you ever said something that your parents has said before something like, don't make me come back there. I will turn this car around. Someone has said that this week. We will turn this car around. Money does not grow on trees. Shut the refrigerator door. Are we trying to air condition in the whole neighborhood? Please and thank you. Please and thank you. And also, because I... I said so. I say that on a daily basis, I think, because I said so. And that's all you need. That's the only reason you need. Now, there are some phrases that are, are fantastic, and I just, I'm, I'm, I'm coming to embrace. Uh, and one of those that I think are, is really wise is this, is the good Lord gave you two ears and one mouth for a reason. You need to listen twice as much as you speak. You need to listen twice as much as you speak. That's a, that's a great one to, to remember. So the question today, this is the question of all day, how good of a listener are you? How good of a listener are you? Now you can go online and you can find uh, tests and other things that will help you. There is a flow chart that I found that, I mean, if you go through the flow chart, chart of when you come to situations, how do you act? Do you do this or do you do that? And at the end of the flow chart, here are the options. You're a great listener. Ding, ding, ding. You are an occasional listener. Your listening skills need work. Now, the best way we can find out how good of a listener you are is turn to your neighbor right now, whoever you came with, and say, how good of a listener am I? I mean, really. Like... Occasional, good, need some help here, okay? So uh, there was an author, not a Christian author. Uh, she uh, wrote a book, uh, and she's a re researcher. Uh, her name's Kate Murphy, and uh, she wrote a book entitled You're Not Listening, What You're Missing and Why It Matters. And she really talks about how essential it is, is the skill of listening. Listen into these words. These are, I think they're really powerful. We, while you might take listening for granted, how well you listen, to whom you listen to, and under what circumstances determines your life's course, the direction of your life. For good or for ill, we are each of us the sum of what we attend to in life. The soothing voice of a mother, the whisper of a lover, the guidance of a mentor, the, admi the admonishment of a supervisor, the rallying of a leader, the taunts of a rival are what form and shape us. The things that we listen to are important. They form and they shape us. And so this last year, you know, I don't know if you've had this conversation with people, but I feel like I have. Okay, in the midst of this craziness that we've experienced for the last more than 365 what is it that I want to take from this? What is it that God's teaching? What is God teaching me in the middle of this, this season? And I feel like God has been teaching me this. It is a spiritual issue. It is a spiritual habit. It's a spiritual need that I become a better listener. I need to become a better listener. I need to become a, a better listener when it comes to God and, and when it comes to other people. And it is essential that I'm listening to the right voice. Because as we travel through life, through the ups and downs, through the difficult, through the, the joy, through the hard stuff, through everything, I need to learn and grow in how I listen to God's voice. 
Now, what I discovered in this last year and, and, and reminded this week that listening, I think, is a spiritual issue. It, it's, it's a spiritual issue. And throughout Scripture, there is this trail. I mean, if you begin to think about it, if you're familiar with God's Word from the Old Testament to the New Testament, we're always, there's always talking about hearing and listening, hearing and listening. Uh, you remember James, maybe, this, maybe you've heard this passage before, James 1.19. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. This sounds like what Mama would say to us. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. That is an awesome verse for us all to memorize. It's a good one. We should teach our kids. We should live that out. Quick to listen, slow to speak. Now, Jesus actually talks about listening all the time. Hey, for those of you who have ears, hear this. Listen up. He, say, he says his prompts all throughout his ministry. I would encourage you just to look for those in the Gospels this week. So think about this. He would tell these stories. The parable of the sower was one of them, where he would preach and share stories, and they had really profound meetings in them. So one day he tells a story about a farmer. And at the beginning of it, it says this. He says the word in exclamation point, listen, listen. A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path. Now, if you remember that story in Mark, he talks about the different places where the seed is thrown. Okay, this is the, the words, this is the gospel that's been thrown out. And there's some, there's, there's hard path, like hardens. It doesn't receive the, the seed very well. There's the rocky, which it, it doesn't grow very well. There's the, the thorns, that it starts to grow, but it gets pushed out. But then there's the good soil. The good soil hears, receives, accepts, and grows. And then at the end of the parable, he says this, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. This is a... This is a story about hearing, about listening, about hearing and knowing God's voice. Now, go down to Mark chapter 9, and there's a story called, it's all about the Mount of, of Transfiguration, which is a strange word. We'll explain what that word means in a second, but it says this in, in Mark 9 too. After six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John, this is like his inner circle, and he led them up to a high mountain where they were all alone. There he was transfigured before them. Well, what does that mean? His clothes began to become dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them. Jesus is like glowing. He is, I mean, glowing. And suddenly, Elijah appears. Moses appears. By the way, these guys have been dead for hundreds and hundreds of years. These are like saints of the church are with Jesus. Now, check Peter. He's there, and I love Peter. He always gives like the most human reaction to situations, to this unbelievably holy moment what's peter's reaction he just he just can't just sit there he can't just absorb it he has to he has to say something so peter says to jesus rabbi rabbi it's a good thing for us to be here let's 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 build some buildings let's put up some shelters uh let's do something here and i love this in, in parenthesis it says he did not know what to say <laughs> have you ever had the moment where it's like there's just silence and you're like I don't do silence. Uh, someone has to say something. It's awkward. Let's, and you just blurt out something. That's our boy Peter. Uh, he didn't know what to say, and they were so frightened. But then, but then a voice suddenly comes from the cloud. The cloud appeared and covered them, and a voice says this, the voice of God. This is my son whom I love. Listen to him listen to him so years ago there was a movie called city slickers uh do you remember city slickers it was so good they had city slickers two i don't know if there was a city slickers three but about the same time i went on a, a missions trip with my youth group i was in high school and we went to a, a christian dude ranch uh in ohio and we learned how to ride horses and we learned how to rope and uh we learned how to clean up horses and horses poo too uh, and we also learned about sheep which are kind of gross by the way and at the end of this awesome experience uh we had a sheep roundup we we're on our horses and we we're getting the sheep to go out to the field and we had to rustle up the sheep uh this was a preview to my days here of course in, in houston um now, I found this week, I found an, a really cool video of sheep, and it's actually a farm in Norway. Check this out. <laughs> One more time. I 
So uh, I was reading this week that even if somebody tries to impersonate a shepherd's voice, that the sheep know the difference between. They're familiar with his voice. Now, if you know scripture a little bit, do you remember that John 10 passage where it says this? This is, this is Jesus' words. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they, they follow me. You see, if we're followers of Jesus Christ, listening it's a spiritual issue it's something we need to get better at it's something we need to grow at and if we want to grow in our relationship with jesus we got to get better at listening listening to god but also listening to others as well because our potential to become like jesus is only as great as our ability to listen and to follow his voice so let's just kind of brainstorm let's have a, a talk here why are we so bad at this? Why are we so bad at listening? Because, I mean, I think collectively, can we, I mean, I'm sure you're a fantastic listener. But why collectively is it, is it hard to be good at listening? I bet you could come up with a few things. A few things that I thought of as I've done some research and talked to some experts or, and listened to some experts. Well, let's be honest, the world has become noisy. It's become very noisy. It's gotten noisier all around us. It seems like the collective noise and the voices just get louder and louder and louder. We have more outlets, and they get louder in the world. I wonder if we went back, say, 100 years ago, and if you could put like a, a decibel reading on the earth, the whole earth, how has it grown in the last 100 years? Things are just louder. It's hard to find quiet places. We each have distractions of choice. And so maybe we're not like Peter and blurt out things when there's moments where we have quiet, but we find something to distract us. We reach for the phone. We reach for the, the remote. We reach for the, 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 the audio to go up. We reach for things to distract us constantly. We, we, have, a hard time with, we have a hard time with listening. Uh, we are losing our attention span. This is not going to come a sh- to be a shock to uh, any teacher in this room or any parents. But here it is. The average attention span of a human in the year 2000... Uh, was 12 seconds. Right now, or I'm sorry, human now is eight seconds. A goldfish has the attention span of nine seconds. So we now have, on average, less of an attention span than the average goldfish, folks. Uh, so that's a problem where we suddenly we can't keep our attention. So Katie, who wrote the book earlier that I mentioned about listening, she is an advocate that we should be teaching our children in school how to listen. We teach them a lot of things. We should teach them the arts of listening. And the last thing is this. When we're in conversations, this is, I feel like this is, we've seen a lot of that in this last year, that we're not such good listeners because when you are in a conversation with someone, you immediately, your mind jumps. You assume something. You hear a word and you go, oh, oh I know what they think about that. Or, I, yeah, I, I don't even have to hear anymore and I know where this is going. Or, and so we jump to conclusions. And we don't even allow someone to speak sometimes because either we have cut them off or we have cut them off here in our minds. And we have learned to, to kind of put up walls, haven't we? getting good at that so horrible uh, situation happened about five years ago now where there was a a protest over over police uh, violence and happened in Dallas and so there was a a protest that was happening in the middle of the protest uh, a gunman comes out and shoots five police officers and and they, they they lost their lives they died just a horrible situation and uh uh, being so close to home, I bet you remember, a lot of us remember that. I mean, remember tuning into that situation. When things like that happen, I'm always, as someone that has a microphone almost every week, I'm always thinking about, worried about, and, and almost praying for the person who has to speak, the leader. The chief of police that week was, he, he made national news. Uh, his name uh, is, is uh, Officer David Brown, or Chief David Brown. And... You know, here he is having to address this situation and try to bring leadership in that moment. And I'm just, I'm, my, my palms are almost sweating when I was listening to him. And he says, looking back, he said, and I was just exhausted in that moment, those moments and just trying to lead. And this is what he led toward. He said, this is what we should do. We should, we should pull protesters in and we should 
bring police officers in and let's bring them into a, a, the same room and let's begin to talk and to listen to one another. What a, what a crazy idea. And he's not surprising he is a, a Christ follower and he's given his life to, to serving other people. And he, what he said is this, with an interviewer later on, he said, where did he get this idea, he basically was asked. And he said this, when, when I went, I was invited when I was a young man to a, a friend's house. And it was a white friend. And when he was 11 years old, he starts to approach the house. And Brown said he felt like Sidney Poitier in the movie Guess Who's Coming to Dinner. Worried that he might get uninvited when his friend's parents found out, they opened the door and found out that he was black. But they welcomed him in, served him pot pie, and they were interested in everything that he had to say. And this is what Brown says. He says, why aren't we smarter than sixth graders? Why can't we figure this out? It takes, it doesn't take, it, it, it takes not a big group, not yelling and screaming, but it, let's sit down and listen to each other and invite someone home to dinner. Invite someone home to dinner. Listening is a spiritual issue. How good of a listener are you? And when we listen to others, when I listen to someone else, what I've learned in this last year, as I hear someone and I see someone, empathy, compassion, these are words that sound a lot like, they sound like, like Jesus. And we see a lot of people are hurting and they're broken on, on the inside. And we have an opportunity to hear and to love people just like Jesus. So uh, there's a guy, a, an actor, his name is... Tom Hanks. Uh, are you familiar with Tom Hanks and his work? Uh, awesome, hilarious movies. I don't know if you could, uh, if you've seen some of his, his funny movies, uh, but uh, fun fact, Tom Hanks was born in Concord, California. He's married uh, to Rita. He is six foot tall and, and oftentimes he weighs 190 pounds. He has moss green eyes. He was actually born July 9th, 1956, which makes him what? 65 years old, maybe? Uh, 56? Somebody do the math for me. Uh, his, he was born Thomas Jeffrey Hanks. He actually went to Nazarene Sunday School when he was a kid. He had made an appearance in Happy Days. And he has a dog named Lieutenant Dan. Uh, now, I made that last part up. I don't know if he has a dog. But <laughs> do you know that you can know a lot of things about someone, but not really know them. I mean, we know this, right? Like, I can name uh, maybe a hundred more things about Tom Hanks, but that would probably make me sound more like uh, a stalker uh, than anything else. We won't say stalker. We'll say a fan. It makes me more of a fan. But can I tell you that Jesus is not really interested in, in just knowledge or just being a, someone being a fan of his? He's looking for followers. He's looking for followers. Tony Evans said it this way, information is not enough. Information can give you knowledge about God, but it's the Holy Spirit that gives you the experience with God. So think about people that you know that have amazing ability to listen and hear God's voice. Have you known somebody like that in your life? Someone that just, it seems like they, they walk with God it seems like they, there are people in, in God's word that were very specifically re attributed that, that, that attribute. People like Moses. This is what they said about Moses. And so the Lord used to speak to Moses face to face, just as a man speaks to his friend. David, a man after God's own heart, they used to say, he wrote these words, As the deer panteth for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God, my soul thirsts for you for the living God. And Paul said this, I want to know Christ. This isn't just head knowledge. This is head and heart. This is relational intimacy. That's what this word know means. It, in the Greek, it means, or in Hebrew, it means yada. In, in Greek, it's gnosko. And it's this deeper, intimate knowledge that we would have with someone. This deeper connection with God. Now, how in the world do you get that? How do you talk and how do you listen to God? Now, I do have a friend that they said when I was a young man, I was going out with a girl and I'm praying and I'm fasting. Is this a relationship that should continue? And he said he heard an audible voice of God in his ear saying, 
no. And so he broke up with that girl. And then he met an awesome lady named Cindy, and they became Kurt and Cindy Vandervoort. Yes, that's right. So Kurt heard God's voice. Now, I have never, ever heard God speak to me personally in an audible voice. But God, God speaks to me. He does. How does that happen? How does God speak to people? He does it through his Holy Spirit. He has given us this gift of the Holy Spirit. And if you are a follower of Jesus, the Holy Spirit lives in you. And maybe you felt prompts or felt leading or you felt maybe conviction. This is what God says in his word that I'm going to leave. This is what Jesus said, but it's going to be a good thing. This is John 14 through 16. It's going to be a good thing because I'm going to bring a, a gift to you, the, the Holy Spirit. And through this, these passages, these are the attributes of the Holy Spirit. That he lives in you and he will be your helper. He'll help you and he will be with you. The Spirit is an advocate that will teach you and remind you of the things of Jesus that Jesus said. He will guide you into all truth. He convicts and he corrects. And the Spirit is a counselor for us. And when you have this relationship with God, with this, the Spirit, he leads us in, in all forms of truth. Now, I told you earlier in the service that I love this season. It is a season where the weather is awesome. I love walks on the beach. We haven't lived in the beach for quite a while, and Galveston is sort of a beach, but it kind of. And I, I love the beach not to go in the water, but instead to walk. I love walks on the beach. And because we're not living close there any longer, like in Florida, uh, my new favorite place is, is the back porch at our house. And we have this porch swing. And in this part of the day where it's just the sun starting to go down, my favorite place to be with Mel is just to spend time, uh, to walk on, a, on the beach, but just to be on this back porch together. And when we can tune out all the other stuff and listen, oh, it's a fun time. It's a, it's a beautiful time. This is what God wants with us as we get to know one another. And this is what prayer is all about. It's listening to God. And it's, it's not about... It's not about trying to get God to do what you want him to do, but instead to come to know him in this relationship. So maybe when you come to a sermon like this, maybe you're hearing stuff like, well, you should do this and you should do that. Do you ever feel like that way with preachers? It's a list of shoulds of, of should and do and don't. Now, I get that sometimes. Uh, if you're hearing that today, uh, that's not my desire. I think we have to, to get past the shoulds, we have to get to the, to the why. Why is this so essential? So I moved a few months back, and when you move, you have to do stuff. You have to change your address, you have to change bills, you have to change all kinds of things, and you have to spend tons and tons of time on the phone with telemarketers and other people that are doing all these corrections, okay? So I don't know if you've ever had an experience with Xfinity before. Uh, they can be very challenging and difficult. I don't know if anyone works at Xfinity. Bless you if you do. Um, but I had multiple experiences during the, the, this prime week where I'm trying to get the internet in my house. I got to get internet in the house. I mean, we've got computers and stuff. All these distractions we mentioned earlier, we need them. Um, and so I contact Xfinity. I'm on the phone for 30 minutes in a Starbucks uh, once. I'm trying to get something worked out. And, and about 30 minutes in, click. I just hear nothing on the other end anymore. And all of the work that's been done for the last 30 minutes, keep back to nothing. Is there anything more infuriating? Like in Starbucks, I'm like, I made that noise. Yeah. And people turned around. That evening, I gave it another shot. I had to get the, the modem figured out. I had to get all that stuff done. And I had to, you know, you have to reset things. And there's long pauses. I, that, on that evening talked to the best telecommunicator I have ever talked to in my life. He had a soothing voice. He was attentive. He was taking notes. He was listening. And when we had these long pauses where you had to reset something, he did something that I've never heard before. Every 30 seconds, he would do this. Matt, I'm here. Matt, you haven't lost me. Matt, I'm still with you. Matt, I'm here. And he just did this. It almost became comical. For literally 15 minutes, he just kept saying this over and over again. And I started to kind of laugh and chuckle a little bit, but at the same time, I was like, this is awesome. <laughs> so all throughout the year, all throughout this last year, 
as I have been walking with God, not just this last year, but for years, as I walk with him, you know what he says to me? I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm here. I'm still here. I haven't gone anywhere. So what I do, and this is this what I do, I sit down with a journal. And I'm not a journal, I'm not a writer by any means, uh, if you've ever read any of my writing. But I just start to sit down and I start to listen to God. And I start to talk with God. And sometimes he gives me names to write down. And sometimes as I listen to his word, he starts to convict me. Hey, remember that conversation you had? You know, that really hurt that person. You weren't doing a good job of listening very there. You were quick to speak and you were pretty quick to get angry. You need to go back and have a talk with them. You need to make things right. Or sometimes he encourages me to do something. He gives me new vision and new passion for things. Sometimes, sometimes he, he puts somebody's name on my heart, and I will reach out to them just to love on them. This is the work of the Holy Spirit. Through my life, I look back, and I see all the places in my life that I've come to massive decisions. And I'm trying to make these decisions, and God has given me discernment through that process. This is the work of God as I listen and I walk with him, and I want to get better at it. I want to get better, and I want you to get better at it, too, because when we do, we'll start to look more like Jesus. So uh, about uh, 20-something years ago, I was with my, my friend uh, Drew the other day, and he reminded me of this. So there was a guy named Tiger Woods. Uh, he is a guy named Tiger Woods, uh, maybe the greatest golfer of all time. That's an argument to have. But he had this commercial. Do you remember the commercial where he took a golf club, and he started to bounce a ball on the golf club? It was, it was like crazy talk and he just and he starts to bounce it up and down just for a long time and then at the end of the commercial he takes it and he hits the golf it was mind-blowing to watch so I saw that commercial and I said challenge accepted I'm gonna figure out how to do this and so I started and I was like all right one <laughs> and then I kept going at it and I was like I got it up oh, there's three okay Whew. so I kept doing this and I'd go to the golf course and I would Play because you got some time in between holes, uh, and or in my room, and I would just you know just keep keep doing that, and then suddenly something happened, where this skill that I did not have before, suddenly I now have, and it's so good that uh, yeah. So do you know there are things that you're not good at or you don't know how to do? but then you can learn how to do. There's tons of things that you can name in your life that are like that. There's skills. Listening is one of those things. Listening to God and talking with God is something that you learn and you get better at and you get better at. And it's also a skill that you get better at with other people, but it doesn't happen automatically. You have to be intentional. You have to focus. So I watched a, a TED Talk this week, and how do you get better at listening to others? And a, a, a sound expert gave us five ways to do that, and I'm not going to go over the, these. We don't have time for that, but I'll give you just a couple of things he suggested. Silence. It's so loud in our world that we should take three minutes a day. This is not a Christian. He said three minutes a day to reacclimate our ears, ears, to reorient our ears. You need silence. A mixer. Like, when things are so loud in your life, he says you need to focus on, on picking out one voice or one thing. He said one of the ways that you can practice that is you go out in nature and you just listen to a bird. In the midst of all the other things, just listen to that bird and just hone your ear in for that. So remember that story I told you about my friend James at that conference that we were like this? So one way you get better at being a listener is you're just like this when you're listening to people. You become an expert at giving attention to some other person. And you get better at it. And so he, he finished it as off, and he talked about listening positions, which are important and savoring things. He, he gives this acronym, and I think this is good stuff, and you could check this out later on. It's all about receiving. You should receive things from people actively. You should appreciate when someone says something. You're not trying to look for the next thing to say, but you're really listening, and you're hearing someone, and you're appreciating that. To summarize it, have you ever noticed this about good listeners? They say things like this. 
what I hear you saying is this. That's someone that's really good at the, the skill of listening. And then last is ask questions. If you're going to be a good listener with someone else, it's to ask questions about experience and to, to connect with someone there. So if you have a phone, uh, you've got a, an area of your phone that looks something like this, an iPhone. Now, if you are like your parents, you haven't discovered this area yet of your phone, <laughs> and you've got somebody in your, your life that can help you. Sometimes, have you ever noticed that you don't get emails or text or you can't connect to the Internet? Sometimes these little buttons get off. And so you have to go back to those buttons and you have to turn on the antenna. You have to tune in so that you can hear and receive, okay? So there's a story about a boy named Samuel. And he was in church one day. And he starts to hear this voice. And he doesn't recognize this voice because he's new to faith. And he goes and runs to the pastor. His name is uh, Eli. The pa and, and he says... So tell me, how do I, uh, how do, what's this, this voice? And, and finally, the, the pastor says this, that's the voice of God. So go back, and when you hear that voice, say this, speak. Your servant is listening. You're turning on the antenna. You're turning on, you're tuning in to God. So what if, what if you started every day just simply having time with God, God, throughout my day today, speak. Your servant's listening. Speak to me, God. Speak to me through your words. Speak through conversations today. So I, I want to give you a chance to respond to the word. Uh, we're going to sing, a, the, the worship team's going to sing a song, and, and around you, you're going to find these sheets of paper. They're around under your, your chair. They are in the little rack in front of your chair. They're all around. It, it's a half sheet that looks like this. As the team sings... I want you to kind of activate what we've heard today. And this is not something you're turning in. This is between you and God. But there are some questions that I just want to, I just want God to prompt you with today. I've been, I prayed over these things. And I want you to take in the next five minutes a few moments and really listen to what God has to say. Listen to what God has to say through these questions. You don't have to write them out, but you, you can if you'd like. And I feel like God has brought you here for a reason, and he's been speaking this whole service. So let's spend time with him and hear what he has to say. Father, we thank you for your presence today, and I pray that you will continue to speak. God, we know that you speak all the time, and I'm, I kind of feel like that we're just not listening. And so I pray that you would open our hearts Open our ears, open our minds to your Holy Spirit. Speak, your servants are listening. Amen.
just stand with me? Father, we thank you for, that you love us, that you have a deep desire to be in a relationship with us. Uh, God, we thank you that you are present. You are with us. Lord, I pray that you would help us in this area of our walk with you, Lord. God, may we prioritize this spiritual habit. Lord, we want to hear from you. Lord, we need to hear from you. Lord, we need your help. Guide our steps, Lord, this season, this week, this day, Lord. Guide our words, guide our heart, Lord. I pray that you would produce in us peace and patience and kindness and goodness and gentleness and self-control and most of all, love, Lord. God, help us to grow in our love for others and for you. We want to know you more, Lord. That is the cry of our heart. So I pray that you would help us as a community to seek you. We hold the promise today that if we seek you, we're going to find you. Lord, so we want to seek you with our whole heart. We pray all these things in your precious holy name. And all God's people said, amen. 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 Hey, quick reminder before I send you out. Uh, next week is the Palm Sunday picnic. And so we will, next Sunday, we'll head out to the field. We'll have a blast together. I'm praying it's going to be a glorious, beautiful day. And uh, we'll get to experience uh, that together. So you learned a verse. James 1.19 is quick to listen. Clearly we did that. Uh, slow to speak. Got that part. Uh, and slow to get. Another verse from James is this. Draw close to me. And I'll draw close to you. <sighs> draw close to him this week. Open your ears and allow him to speak. Go in the grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mountain high, valley low.